Welcome to CivilNet. My guest from afar is Arsen Stepanian, a civil society specialist uh, from Armenia who's worked in parliament, within government, outside government, and is now a Muskie fellow at State University of New York studying public administration. Arsen, welcome back to Armenia, even virtual. Uh, thank you, Salvi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, Arsen, you know about the process that has led to what is now an interesting item of debate discussion uh, in the Armenian public, and that is the Armenian government's public council, the body that is, uh, uh, works in conjunction with the Armenian government, representatives of Armenian society from different sectors, uh, talking about ways of improving, helping, supporting civil society, civil society institutions, uh, non-governmental organizations, and how they might better cooperate with government. And this is a great subject of debate uh, because people can't tell if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Tell us about the history of this. How did we get here? Um, Salve, I like how, how you were struggling to define the public council. And I will get to that point later on, but essentially this whole issue started with uh, 2010 government initiative to uh, reform NGO legislation. And uh, many of uh, people in civil society field remember that campaign. Many were involved and um, that situation essentially we can somehow call a victory of civil society where civil society organizations or non-profits, Armenian non-profits were able to uh, effectively uh, uh, mm, limit the advancement of that piece of legislation, that right. controversial piece of right. legislation. Right. And as a result of it, the organizations involved decided to go one step forward and put forward the concept or principles for reform to improve the civil society environment or to improve the legislative environment in which non-profit organizations operate in Armenia. The civil society organizations decided to do this. Correct. And that, that was essentially the same group with, uh, I mean, it came from this idea that, you know, the non-profits keep opposing government initiatives. Now, let's say, what is our recommendation? What is the way our vision? And that vision was um, incorporated into one document that's currently in circulation. And if you go to the website of the Civil Society Development Network, CSDN, which is kind of the legacy of that NGO legislation campaign, you will see that draft on the website uh, with the principles and uh, with the recommendations. And is it similar to the one that is now on the Public Council website? Uh, I feel that it's almost the same. So you don't think that the content of the document is the problem. The problem is reciprocal trust, perceptions. Is that uh, the crux of the problem? Look, there are two issues in, uh, in this. Uh, there, are, there are two sides of this uh, situation, of the issue. One side is the content and the other side is the process. Now, uh, as to the content, I uh, feel that the content reflects what, what uh, the initial concept developed by Civil Society Development Network Group uh, has put forward. As to the process, I will present uh, my view on the process separately. Now, what the content includes, per se, is different problems that non-profit organizations sure. face. Sure. And it's important to differentiate between civil society and non-profit organizations because this particular piece of document is mostly reflecting the challenges of non-profit, non-profit, non-governmental organizations. Well, because civil society per se is a larger concept. It includes like uh, trade unions, it includes political parties, religious organizations, and other forms of uh, organizations as uh, uh, described by Armenian legislation. Uh, however, that this this uh, I, the, the, this organization those organizations have many different problems that are not reflected in this concept. Therefore, stating that this concept is for the non-profit, non-governmental organizations will be a correct way to proceed. So this is the first thing. 
Secondly, the issues raised, including the volunteerism, including the service provision concept, including the uh, like uh, transparency of those organizations, those are like very valid points that need to be addressed by the in government. We have a bigger issue behind this concept. It's the size of the government issue. Do we want to have a government where for every single project, government is opening a new unit and we end up having hundreds of thousands of civil servants who are potential easy voters? Or do we want to have uh, those services contracted out uh, to non-profits and perhaps to other for-profits, make it competitive, and government's role being only oversight of processes? There is this behind the scene issue that's not uh, this, this much, and but that's relevant to the concept thing. Now, and then you will ask me if there are good, important uh, issues that need to be addressed. A group of organizations is opposed to the process. And then I will go back to your initial um, try to define the public concept. There is this, through this initiative, I feel, that there is an attempt made to legitimize the public council. The, the, the idea of public council, which is a Russian idea that came from the Putin administration. No wonder I couldn't define it. Came, the, 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 this public council was one of the Russian government's mechanisms to control the civil system. Sure. Uh, the way they did it, they brought in all the organizations they like liked and uh, claimed that this is the representation of the uh, voice of the or voice of the third sector which is not true and when you look at the details of what the public council is that's an uh, advisory body to the president's administration now and the, the way that select i haven't elected them at office i haven't elected these people to become public council members and they represent me as an individual. So per se, because, uh, the, because of the nature of that institution as being as an advisory board of the president, that's not a legitimate institution to stand up and speak on behalf of civil society. Arsene, at this point, we have what we have. We have a document that the public council has presented, ostensibly from or on behalf of civil society. What should legitimate civil society organizations do? As you said, the process is a little odd, but the content may not be so bad. Look, uh, it's not uh, stating that there is a concept by the public council will be only one side of the issue, because there is another concept by Civil Society Development Network, which is almost the same or similar now. And that's always the case that civil society organizations, that the field of nonprofits, is diverse. Uh, my feeling is that if government is truly interested in improving uh, or supporting the non-profit organizations, the government in the face of the Ministry of Justice or perhaps a, a parliamentary committee on human rights and public affairs shall take a lead and uh, for put forward their concept which states government of Republic of Armenia, draft concept, etc., etc., and go with it. And if government takes the initiative, the executive branch takes the initiative, that will uh, make sure that this is not a political game towards upcoming uh, presidential elections. Okay, let me ask a cynical question quick, and it needs a quick answer. I don't understand why such a document is needed to begin with unless it will develop into legislation that says this is what government will do for civil society organizations. Otherwise, why do you need such a good document? For small uh, minor reforms, you can go with and start with draft legislation. This reform has a like comprehensive idea, like smaller size of government contracting out, issue of the volunteerism, transparency of uh, non-governmental institutions. Those are like big concepts concepts and you start with a, a concept paper, you agree on the basic principles and then the next step is to go with the pieces of legislation to address those issues raised in the concept. Now if the government is truly interested to support the non-profit field 
and to make it stronger, to make the civil society stronger and to partner with it, they do put forward uh, a good concept, which is their intent of uh, supporting and the principles upon which they will proceed uh, during upcoming next three to five years. Thank you. Uh, clear. It'll be an interesting process to see if, in fact, this goes forward that way. Arsen Stepanian, civil society expert, participant uh, from New York, from State University of New York, thank you for speaking with CivilNet. Thank you.